So, so hi, so here we are, um, Wednesday, December 7th, and my name is Dawn, Jeff uh, of the Elite Trade. I think he, we, you're not on camera, there you are. <laughs> We um, we just we decided to host a session, and we're going to do this every Wednesday to 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 just bring in people. And I'm so happy, like Rita introduced you, John, and hopefully more people will introduce your, their friends to what we do on Wednesdays. And um, and really, this is meant for people who are beginners, people who are trading. Um, there is a starting point for everyone. Uh, and just a little bit about my story. I was uh, introduced to the world of trading in 2016. I began to work for a company that employed me to get in front of the room and do a three-hour presentation and tell people about what's possible when you understand how the markets work. And that's where I met Jeff. And Jeff was, you know, one of the, I think the top teacher, I will tell you, my favorite teacher out of the group of 180 teachers at this, um, at, in this company. And um, I was in a futures class with him and we'll talk about what futures are. It's a great uh, leveraged asset to trade intraday because the return on investment is very high and you could really, you know, limit your losses with stop losses and, and things like that. And um, I came up to him and said, Jeff, can I fly out to Arizona and spend a week with you and just sit with you at your computer? And at that time, because of his obligation to the company, like he, he couldn't do something like that. But I knew instinctually that that's the only way you're going to learn this is being side by side by somebody who understands this, who knows this, take live trades with them and, and put that screen time in on a consistent basis. So it really wasn't until the pandemic that I was spending a lot of time trading during that time, you know, was, was sort of flying by the seat of my pants. I was in several different groups and then Jeff and Caitlin, um, and he'll talk about uh, they they launched uh, an amazing platform called the Elite uh, Trade, and um, I said, "Oh my gosh, my dreams come true!" Because now I could trade with you, and uh, this is the real deal. So there are people who are traders that come into that. There are people who are brand new to trader, and I do one on ones with them and hold their hand, and then we we have you all go into like the beginner class, and then. Um, then there's a community and you trade with the community every day. And uh, so we're going to just show you the kind of things that we do. And as you have questions, just let us know. Um, and thanks. For, you all shared with us, you know, why you're here. And I would just uh, encourage you to be open. And, and we have at the end of the presentation, we have a uh, a free invitation for you. Uh, I have a link uh, and we want to invite invite you to, you know, join us. In, in the morning tomorrow and Friday too, if that is something that you're open to doing. So I'll just start off and just give you a sense of um, the agenda for today. And then we're gonna just show you, show you some real live things, okay? So start the screen, here. And you all see my screen, yes? Yep. Okay. Awesome. So we we call this trade smarter skills for profit. Um, and one of the things that I will be touching on too, when you are at a level where where you're proficient enough, you can actually trade with other people's money. Uh, there is uh, Jeff. What do you, you refer to them as? What prop shops? Say so, say so that again, please. You refer to Top Step and, and companies like that as prop shops. I, I'm sorry, I you broke up there. Sorry. Trade, okay, I, Top Step. I'm saying uh -huh. you you refer to them as prop prop shops, right? Yeah, prop shop, a trading floor. Mm -hmm. A trading right. So so basically, I am part of a group called uh, Top Step, and I get to trade with their money after I prove to them that I'm a consistent, profitable trader. So, you know, there, there are many things I had to demonstrate 
beforehand. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a you know a couple of months. But I'm in a position right now where I'm not even using my money to trade. And then as that account gets you know larger, like my cadences at the end of the week, let's say you know I make five hundred dollars a day on average. Just this bringing in my losses. So that's $2,500. And what, what I basically do is just pay myself half of that at the end of the week, right? So that's, that's my income. And um, this didn't happen overnight. You know, I spent years and years and years to get to this point. But now that we have the elite trade, and this foundation of how to slowly get into this and how to safely get into this. Uh, certainly you'll be trading on a paper account before you risk dollar <laughs> one of your money. And, you know, I have people who I'm mentoring where, you know, they're using paper accounts, which are, are simulated accounts for, you know, at least a hundred, 200 trades. Like what did you suggest to your students, Jeff? Um I so just getting the education, okay, first and foremost, it's understanding that, you know, our markets are not as random as you would think they are. And, you know, the way that we work at the elite trade here is we look for where the institutional orders that were left over. See, when, when a trader steps in, especially floor traders, market makers, and big institutional type trading, okay, when they step into the market, they do not get all of their orders filled at the same time. So it's not like they push one button, you know, and order filled and uh, they get their whole position. Okay. Well, when they don't get their whole position, it, we start to see the price leaves that area very quickly and um, it, it leaves a footprint. And we use that footprint to say, okay, well, they didn't get all of their orders filled and they, they don't chase price. They don't adjust up. They just wait for price to come back to them. So that footprint shows us that there's a huge demand or there's a huge supply of unfilled orders. So this is a, a very different way of looking at the markets because when the markets drop very quickly or drop in particular, what the algorithms and computers are looking for is where, where is the large stack of buy orders so that they can offset the sell tickets. Okay. And when price is shooting straight up, it's not that everybody's buying, it's just nobody's selling. So the, the, the computers keep adjusting price up until they get to that equilibrium where there's enough sell orders to offset buy orders and back and forth. Okay. So it's a different way of looking at the market. And as we see those areas where the unfilled orders are at, we consistently see that price changes direction. Now, when we're looking at the price charts, there's a very specific group of candles and there's some information just over to the left-hand side of the chart that shows us that footprint. And in, it's a very ge geometrical shape. It's very easy to spot once you're shown how to do it. And then we just start applying it couple different places to take trades. Some are a little more aggressive and some are a little bit more uh, passive. Now, we also find that this works on many different time frames. It's just the picture on the chart that triggers us to click the button and say buy or click the button and say sell. Yeah, so we'll go into this and yes, it works on many time frames and many different styles of trading. So we're talking about futures here. Uh, I know Ken who's here works with me and does the wheel strategy, right? So he's uh, selling uh, covered calls and cash secured puts and he's he's creating income from his portfolio, right? Where where he has, um, somebody's, okay, oops, somebody's, we got some people in the background here. Okay. I'll monitor the background for a second. Yeah, that's one Okay, let me find out what's going on here. I'm going to mute this. So um, you got it. Okay, cool. So um, now I was interrupted. So this works 
on even your long-term portfolio. If you're selling ca uh, covered calls or cash secured puts and determining, you know, if you're selling premium twice a month or, or four times a month, you know, where you want to put those strike prices for options. Uh, if, if you want it, if you know you want to buy more shares of a particular company, you know, where you want price to go down to before you put in your order. So, so this, this is, this works no matter what it is that you, what it is you're investing and trading in, right? So um, on intraday though, mostly we do futures and we'll, we'll talk about that for income. All right, so I'm gonna share the screen again. All right, you see my screen? So we just have to get this out of the way that um, nothing that we are sharing with you today should be construed as a recommendation to purchase or sell a security. We're not um, providing investment advice here. Um, you need to assess your uh, level of risk and your tolerance for risk because uh, different products you, you know, may not be suitable for all people. Leverage can work against you as well as for you. Um, and there is a possibility you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment. You should be aware of all the risk associated with trading and investing. And as always, we recommend that you seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So you guys are all on the same page with us on that. Jeff, you want to add anything to that? Pretty no, much what we say. Yeah, just keep in mind that, you know, one thing that we teach here and one thing that I've worked with Don on is that it's the picture on the price chart. It's how to read the price charts and kind of understand why price changes direction when we're watching those price charts. Now, there's only a couple of reasons why price changes direction, and that's just there's more buy tickets than sell tickets or more sell tickets than buy tickets. Okay. So as we, as Don walks through the presentation, shows you some examples here. All of these are thought out ahead of time. They're pre-planned trades. Two. Oh, we just got in there. I've been playing. Natural gas has just been doing a great job today producing. What did you we just, just took the break out you just the get upside, into? So. Okay. But um, upside. Yeah. So, um, the while we're while Don's going through this presentation. Try to listen to the information that she's sharing. It's a very methodic, it's very rule-based. We manage the risk on every single trade. And um, not every trade is gonna produce a profit. It may produce a small loss and we wanna manage those losses. And yeah, just um, enjoy the show and kind of ask a lot of questions. Don't be shy about it, okay? Yes, yes. So our agenda here with you today is we're going to talk about the day in the life of a trader and, you know, what happens when we jump out of bed. And, and I, I mean, I'll be really honest, like I love waking up early in the morning. I'm on the West Coast now. So the market for me opens up at 6.30 a.m. And like I'm tingling at 5.45, like I'm excited, like it's Christmas morning every morning when I get up. I'm, it's not a joke. My, you know, my husband like sleeps for a couple of more hours. I'm, you know, up and I love trading early because literally the trades that we take are between 7 a.m. my time and about 8, 8.30 or nine o'clock my time. And Jeff will talk to you. This is when the institutions are trading. You want to say anything more about that, Jeff? The predicted, our, well, our method and what you'll see from the elite trade you know, as it relates to strategy is, um, has a higher probability of profitability when the institutions and banks are trading, okay? Because we want to follow them and that's what we're gonna show you. Uh, that's what we're going to show you. Uh, so we do a pre-market uh, routine every day. Mm -hmm. So 6 a.m. my time, uh, we hop on a call and Jeff and Caitlin take us through what, what I'll show you in a little bit. And we know, okay, like today, Jeff, what was the big news today? Well, we started oh. off, yeah, as, as we started off our, our mornings, you know, we, we look at very specific details to understand if we're going to have a, a moving market with the equity indexes or if we're going to be trading commodities for the most part. And the pre-market routine is a, a teaching tool along with, you know, us preparing our students and preparing us for trading. Now, I'm a very big component of 
you know, if you're going to be teaching somebody how to trade in the market, there's going to be, you know, there's risk involved. There's a lot of emotion involved. Is that I need to demonstrate it in that live market to prove that these things work, you know, and the more a student sees the trades working out in front of them, the more it changes their belief system. They start focusing on what they really want to create, what they want to manifest. Okay. So the pre-market routine is how we organize everybody's thoughts in the morning, get them on the same page. And then we start demonstrating what we cover in the master and the charge course. You know, here are the, the pictures on the price chart. This is what, um, what we're going to do. And just like uh, taking trades today, we had several that uh, actually this week has been a, a phenomenal week. Um, traders have been doing really well. So. Yeah. So just like anything else, it's about preparing right before I go out on the pickleball court, <laughs> my favorite game, I stretch before you run a few miles, you're going to stretch, right? You, there are things that you do to prepare. So we're going to talk about making money like the banks and institutions. There are times of the day when they're making their moves and what we're looking for in the charts. Our rules around trade entry. Um, I'll touch on a little bit about what trading with other people's money looks like. And then please stay until the end because we have a free invitation for you all to trade with us. Okay. So pre-market routine, um, the calendar, and Jeff, if you want to just say anything about this, um, but uh, we we look at the calendar, we look at the news, you, you, we want to see what the economic calendar looks like for the, the week that we're trading. Uh, what are resources that you go to, Jeff, that you may want to trade, what we may want to share here? We, we have very specific information that we look for. And this is from my 30 years experience that I've had watching these markets and being around trading each day. We have a term that um, basically we identify the prior day's trading range. We call it the, uh, you know, basically the prior day's range. Okay. Now, if the next morning, so if I have the range here and prices inside that prior day session on the equity indexes, often that is a very choppy market. Difficult for trending type trades, getting in and just letting it work. So we have to change our mindset to be short-term trading, taking the short-term profits very quickly. Um, and then if prices outside that range, we often have some good trending days or trending throughout the day. So many different pieces of information can influence the market that are outside of the price chart, like news, economic events, uh, many of the economic reports come out between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern, and that's generally when the banks and institutions are doing most of their order flow. Because we trade like and with the banks and institutions using their footprints of where they have unfilled orders, that time of day between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern is when we um, are most active along with the banks and institutions. It's where our trades become more successful during that time. Now, the later you go on throughout the day, there are some trading opportunities depending on um, what else is happening in a, you know, like a big news event or president speaking and things like that. We monitor all of those and um, not only me, but my partner, Caitlin, and uh, also if we're in a discord room trading or students, Students get conditioned really fast to understand what we're looking at. So they, they kind of point out things. Hey, you forgot this. You forgot that. Or, hey, this is coming up. And we become a, a unit of like-minded individuals. We're all watching different things on our price chart. And we use that information collectively to trade in the right direction and have the higher probability of a successful outcome. So yeah, the pre-market routine is definitely getting your day organized so you know where your, your zones are. Um, I'll share my screen just for a quick second here. Yeah. Okay. I just need help there. So one of the things that I, I do, and this is from, from the morning session, okay, is that you know, I just mentioned uh, the prior sessions range, you know, whether we're inside or outside, 
but we broke outside that range. So that means that there's going to be more trending environment. Okay. We also marked the Globex high and Globex low, which is the overnight or extended hours session because futures trade virtually 24 right. hours. And this is and this is the ES that he's looking at. So this is a futures product and it's on the S&P 500. Correct. And, you know, we put all of these areas out here on the price chart. And um, then we have some zones like marked with the lines. This is where we expect price to turn. Uh, we have some very big things happening in the market here where we probably see some choppy area in within this range between 3906, 38, and 72. And then there should be a, a pretty good free fall. And this is coming up soon, okay? probably before we see that Santa Claus rally. Uh, on our other products, I post these in our Discord room. And like we had a great trade on wheat this morning that produced really good profit. Uh, we had a, another trade on corn. Uh, it, for me, it doesn't matter what we trade as long as it's going to be profitable for the students and uh, they can uh, make money from that as well. Um, in setting up our day, we, we go down to some very small time frames, like on the, the tick chart, where we can watch some of these uh, trade setups happen intraday. We have different clues where we're using resistance or support around these areas. And we look for where price may break out and where price may have a, a significant move. As NASDAQ is moving up the, uh, in Q, looking for a little area right here, 11,528, 536, looking for that to be the picture of where we have some unfilled orders. And that's where I'll take the trade short. So if you're still brand new and you need to learn what is long, what is short, uh, um, those terminologies we get involved in uh, kind of at a basic uh, boot camp level where we teach people what are futures products. Nice thing about using some of these equity indexes is the minimal amount of capital that we use. Like the NASDAQ, uh, uh, you can go out to many different brokers and Don has uh, shown us some brokers uh, like Tradeovate uh, brokered platform. Oh my gosh. It only requires like $50 a contract to trade it. Okay. Whereas you, it's a hundred for a hundred for NASDAQ, a hundred for NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, it, it's just uh, the preparation that we do in the pre-market helps us set up the tone and what we expect to happen throughout the day. A nice part about the equity index futures is, and I'll bring up the, the NQ again, is that futures products always follow something. They never leave, okay? And I know the word future means like, oh, that's what's gonna happen to the stocks. That's not necessarily true. The stocks move first, the futures adjust to what the stocks are. So we have six uh, large market cap weighted stocks. We use those as additional odds enhancers to help us say, well, what are the stocks doing? Are they going up, they're going down, they're going sideways. And right now we can see that they're all pretty much going sideways. And so is the, the equity index. So a lot of preparation goes in ahead of time so that we put, uh, we minimize the risk and we look for great profit potential, which you, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, learning this. And there is a learning process as Don um, put out there, you know, the pre-market routine is helping us understand the trading environment. And if I was using an analogy about that would be that, you know, we drive our car as dynamically okay we drive our car as an individual but we also drive our car as part of the crowd okay so if you're looking at only a stock chart or a futures chart you're missing the traffic that's outside of your vehicle so we have to look at the news the economic events and those things that we um, put in the pre-market routine are those things outside what's the traffic doing are we merging in our freeway are we in a country road or is it wide open or are we in traffic Okay, so a lot of understanding at that point. It's not complex. I mean, no more complex than driving a car. <laughs> we just have to, uh, we have to learn those things just like we did learn in a car. So back to you, Don. Sorry, I get on my okay. soapbox. Here. No, that's, I, I love how this is flowing. So thank you so much. So uh, as, as Jeff shared, 
I'm going to go to the full screen here. Uh, Jeff and his partner, Caitlin, do so much work. I, I know Caitlin does so much work. Uh, this is sort of her like back, uh, back office area, determining the cell zones, the targets where, where we want to look for, you know, uh, for four products here uh, that we have here. We're looking at the ES, which is the S&P 500, the NQ, which is the NASDAQ, RTY, Russell 2000, and the Dow, YM. So what's great about futures is there, you don't need, you know, the, the minimum account amount of $25,000 that is required, right? When you're trading equities. If you want to say a little bit about that, Jeff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, right, the, the intraday. NASD requires if you're going to be active trading with stocks that your minimum account size is 25,000 or above. But with futures, you could use an account as little as two or 3,000 bucks or even less with uh, some of the resources that Don will share with you. Yeah, so that's what's really wonderful too. Also, I, you know, I'm not a, a, ta a tax accountant, but I believe just Jeff, um, capital gain on futures is a whole lot less than it is if you trade than if you had been trading equities and the capital gain on equities that you have to re report to the IRS, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are details around that. So every morning we, we, we have this, this is prepared for us. <laughs> what's in the news, right? Economic reports, what's, what's coming up? Um, what's wonderful about Wednesday and Thursday is Every week we have uh, crude oil on Wednesday, natural gas on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. We have, uh, is, is it um, uh, uh, Chris in our group, right? Uh, if you want to say a little bit about Chris, she's done a report uh, every week and shows that um, when the, before the report comes out, to, to poise yourself in a way where you can profit from a big move, either up or down. And, and the opportunity there is, is really, really great and predictable. If you want to say something about that, Jeff. I'm sorry, I was responding there? to another email here, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of folks oh, that's a, coming in, so. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so we're talking about the natural gas report and the um, mm -hmm. crude oil report, how that's a beautiful, predictable event. Yes, um, Every week. one of the things that we, we do in the pre-market routine is we document uh, the different reports that come out, okay? And uh, every week on Wednesday and every week on Thursday, barring a holiday, okay, the crude oil or natural gas report comes out. Now, when that report comes out, often the market reacts a certain amount, you know, all banks and institutions have their position heads, especially for an economic or report that's coming out. So a, a normal reaction is about on the crude oil is about 89 cents. Okay. Now, if you're trading the mini crude uh, or you're trading the crude oil futures contract, um, that's $10 per point or per tick. So within just a few minutes, you could see that. 89 cents move up or move down. Okay? And you can trade it both ways by selling a futures contract and get making money on the way down or buying the futures contract and on the money move back up. Okay. So if there are some things that we document from the pre-market routine that we also put in here that about economic reports and how certain economic reports impact the market more than others. We start measuring those report, the reaction of those, and uh, the reaction of that, especially for crude oil and natural gas, is very predictable. Uh, one of our students, and I just got to brag about here. I'm going to share the screen one more time here. Yeah, uh, please. Just share. so that I can uh, do it properly. Uh, in our Discord room, you know, sometimes we get some jokers out there, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Chris, uh, uh, I got to give you a little background on Chris. She's um, she's one of our older students, very dedicated. And this this is what she wrote up today. Now, keep in mind, Chris is uh, 78 years old, okay? 
And what she's been doing is and is tracking the economic report. So she said trading around Wednesday, oil report. Okay. Over the last 22 weeks, she's been measuring this, and the average move has been 89 cents. Okay. And as she goes through this, she starts plotting out where the zones will be. Okay. So she says, based on the report, this was last week's report, based on the move down and move up, she found this setup that we teach. Okay. We find the resistance, we have a little buy territory, and price dipped right into that area. Now, the average move was 89 cents, but we had a, a buy zone uh, a little bit before. So she got into that trade long and took it up and profited about $60 on her trade. She was just using some micros, okay? But it, it's a very predictable report that comes out every uh, Wednesday at 1030 Eastern. On Thursday is the natural gas report. And Chris has been tracking both of these. And, and posting her trades to help other students. This is part of our Discord room. In our Discord room, we have general chat where we can put anything in there, jokes and casual conversation. And then we have a place over here, which is basically picture perfect past trades, okay? And when we start looking at these picture perfect past trades, we start seeing what students are doing Okay, and this is part of what Chris was doing also on this one is on natural gas is she's as you start learning one of the progressions that accelerates your learning curve is sharing it with other people, helping other people achieve their goals. Okay, so I encourage students to put their charts out here, get that picture show where they took a trade and as they do this, they become more connected to doing the right thing and following the, the trade plan. Uh, it, and it's very exciting for us as educators to watch, and here's, here's a good one. Uh, we had the, the support, price broke through the support, took out all the other buyers over here. Once it came back up and found the sellers, we had a very nice move down. So this was uh, on Hasbro, a stock, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, whether it's futures, stocks, options, uh, Forex, or even crypto, they all have the very self-similar pattern that keeps repeating. So that showing student or students showing their trades is, is also helps. The active income channel here is uh, where, like, we just got a few people in here that kind of are diehard traders. They, they hang out here all day long and make trades. And... Um, you know, I'm usually hanging out in there with them. But I'm here learning and teaching and putting pieces of, uh, putting things together with the students. And um, of course, this is one of my my sources of income. So I, I, it's more fun to hang out with people, kind of saying, "Yeah, look at this. Oh, futures are going up. Futures are going down. There's a setup here." The community is very, very important because trading can get pretty lonely. Um, just trading by yourself for long periods of time. Yeah, no, thank Thanks you for, for sharing. That, what, yeah, what, what I want to show is let's go back. I think what a good example of how one would have profited today. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the breakout trade opportunity that Caitlin uh, placed in, on the, on the, um, on, on the um, daily prep screen. So you see right here, December 7th, 2022, that's today. Russell 2000, RTY, short, 1821, right? So Jeff, let's, let's look at what the opportunity was with the Russell, because I have on my, I'm looking on my screen, uh, taking that short at 1821, right at the beginning of the market, uh, we would have gotten 1821 all the way down to 1807, right? So if you want to share your screen. So for every point on the Russell, every point that goes down, what is that for the RTY? Per point. Well, the Russell, this is the Russell 2000, which is the bottom. Yeah. 2,000 stocks of the Russell 3,000, okay? So 
1821 area, Caitlin was looking at a, a short trade, and I'm dropping down to a small time frame just to, to see that movement. And see, so we're still looking for the same picture on the price chart. I'm just trying to find where, yeah, we're right here. So as I set this up, we have a very specific step-by-step -step process that we look at. And right. one so, of the areas- So that's a one minute. That Every single candle is um, demonstrating movement in the market during a one minute period for those of you who are seeing this for the first time, yeah. Yeah, this, this just means that each candle represents one minute worth of time. Or some of the, some traders um, would uh, trade like yeah, this one, 20 minute, each candle represents 20 minutes worth of time. And uh, when I come down to the my tick charts, each candle represents about 2000 transactions. So different ways to look at the chart, but we're all looking at the same picture on that chart. So the opportunity that Caitlin was uh, presenting right there was uh, once we had that support area and then once price broke that support, it was an opportunity to get in. With the RTY, which is a Russell mini contract, it pays out $50 per point move, okay? Um, about $5 per tick and there's 10 ticks per point. Okay, kind of give you the breakdown. We'd go over this very much in detail in the futures trading bootcamp that we do to help people get familiar with futures. So there was a, a nice little trade from that breakout point down. And uh, I'm just gonna show the on the label. In this case, it was nine, nine and a half, Nine and nine point four points. Okay, so if you were to put that in as a mini contract, um, that would be roughly about four hundred and fifty dollars. And I can even get you the span of time wait, on wait, that. Wait. Yeah, yeah, four hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, four hundred fifty dollars. About ten minutes. And in ten minutes, so you would have had the opportunity to make four hundred fifty dollars in ten minutes, and. Of course, you know, you'd know you be setting a stop loss. Our rule of thumb on a stop loss is, so for the RTY, just so you get a sense of like how much you would need in your account to trade one uh, contract in the, for the um, broker trade of eight, you would need $500. So that's the total capital required for the trade. So literally that was making, that's almost a hundred percent on your money in 10 minutes. If you mm -hmm. divide $450 by the capital required to take that trade, what does that come to? 95% return on your capital in 10 minutes. Yeah. It's... Who, who, who likes that return on capital? Mm -hmm. Right? These are very and... predictable. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. These are very predictable um, price pattern. Like here on a bigger time frame, the where do we have the buyers sitting right now as far as the picture on the price chart for the Russell is at 1771. Okay. Now we do have a trade that's active to take the trade short at 1802. And we can see that when we look over to the left hand side of the chart, that there is a very big void where price had a move up. And I can see this was off of an economic report. Now Many traders will say, well, everybody's making money on that. No, it was very, 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 very light volume, very light volume on that move up. So once price starts getting below this 1813, 1802 area, there's nothing to hold it up until it gets back down to the buyers. So we use that information on the left-hand side of the chart to see that this whole area between 1802, 1771, uh, how many points is that? That's about 30 points, right? Right. So, so 30 that's points $50 a point. Uh, oh, sorry, 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 1500. Yeah. And then we also teach you how to do the risk management that there, as price is coming to that place we want to take the trade, we are looking for a very specific group of candles. And if I can just take a, a moment here. Uh, and step out. Does anybody have a chart that they, just something at a random, something, um, any chart? Yeah, give us a, 
give us a chart that you want to look at or stock anything you'd like for us to look at. Don't be okay. shy. This is your hour. Which one do you want to do, Don? Come on. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's, what, can somebody give us something, please? I, I want you guys to participate. The euro? The euro. euro? The word. Okay, here I have the euro futures, okay? Now, a couple of things that when we start off teaching and showing you the area on a price chart, okay? One of the first things that we do is, is you have to get an understanding of what is it you want to create on this price chart, okay? Well, looking to the left, everything is hindsight is picture perfect, right? So we must train the eyes and train ourselves what we're going to look at. One of the first steps is, okay, what do I desire to create? Well, I'm looking at this and say, man, I would love to buy right here and take this move to the upside. That would be a great trade, okay? Well, when we have a desire to get into trade here, we must look over to the left and find the picture that helps us get into it, okay? Now, I wanted, I'm just going to so walk like the through. foreshadowing, like, like that foreshadows that mm -hmm. that gave us a tip off to what is going to happen in the future with a high with high probability. So what we look for is a very specific group of candles, and we call these uh, basically any candle on the chart that you have the body is greater than 50 percent of the range. And the range is from the high to the low. So if I was just to give you a, an example here okay let's just say this is the body of a candle and we have the oops <laughs> yeah i was updating some okay we got the basically if the candle's red that means it opened higher and then closed lower if it's green it opened lower and closed higher okay so the range is from the high to the low. If the body of the candle is greater than 50% of the range, we call it a, a leg candle. If the body is less than 50% of the range, we call it a, a base candle, okay? So, I mean, you kind of eyeball this, but we do have uh, tools on the chart, for example, as I turn on this uh, tool here, every candle, letting the computer do it, every candle where the body is less than 50% of the range has a blue dot on it, okay? So what we're looking for is a group of these candles where we have a leg in, base, leg out, base. So if I have a desired trade here, I need to look over to the left-hand side of the chart and find that group of candles. So, the leg in for going long, the leg in would have to be red and the leg out would have to be green. In between the leg in and leg out, we can only have base candles, like a very specific group of candles. And we kind of I map- see one. <laughs> yep, we map that range right there around that group of candles. Now remember, what were we looking to do? We were looking to find out what is over here that's very consistent where we can see where price changes direction, okay? So the association is if I desire to make a trade here, what is over here that's very consistent there all the time for me to make a trade, okay? And we use this as a forward-looking technique. So as I'm going over to the... Um, the right side of the chart where we have to make trades, I would take current price and I'd look down and I'd start looking for that picture on the price chart. First, we find our resistance because this is where sellers kept pushing price down. And then once there were no more sellers, price took off, okay? This helps us identify, and I think I still have, yeah, I could do this here. I'll just walk you through what I'm looking for. Our steps, one through five, support and resistance, identify buy territories, sell territories, map out the structure, 
find the area, then turn the time frame down or up to locate the leg base, leg base scoop of candles. So step one, just find the really easy support and resistance areas. Put the box so we see where the sellers are camped out, the buyers are camped out. Identify the little structures in here. The structures help us identify where the, the proper location where the unfilled orders are still waiting. So if we make a higher low, generally the zone is closer to the breakout or resistance area. If we make a lower high than the prior high, then the zone is closer to the support area. So as we circle those areas and then drop the time frame down to isolate where we would take the trade short or where we take the trade long, this becomes a forward looking technique that if price returns to the supply, then we will take action and sell short. If it returns to the demand, we will take action and go long. So it's a very step-by-step -step process that we go through. What I'm taking you through right now is training the eyes, okay? And so every place that we desire to make a trade, okay? And before I take you too deep, you know, let's just use this one as an example as well. I would love to go long right here. In order to get that trade long, I would have to look over here for that leg base, leg base group of candles, okay? So I'm on a 60 minute chart now, I can start dropping it down one minute at a time, looking for that specific group of candles. Oop, five, seven. And it, it doesn't matter the time frame. It just matters that you get the right group of candles so you can isolate the zone. We spend a lot of time on the left-hand side of the chart so that we can understand when to make trades on the right-hand side, okay? So here we have a desired trade. I have a candle, which we call a leg-in candle, where the body is greater mm -hmm. than 50% of the range. Colors matter. We have a base candle where the body is less than 50% of the range, a leg out where the body is greater than 50% of the range, and it's a green candle, colors matter. In between a leg in and leg out, only a base candle. The first base candle after the leg out is where we put our, what we call proximal line or entry line. And then we put our stop loss at the lowest wick, tail or shadow, okay? So what we desire to create, okay, is a perfect trade where we make money, wow. okay? So what we're looking for over on the left-hand side is what is present, what group of candles, what's consistently there when price changes direction, okay? Now, usually we'll go into detail later in, in course material and stuff of when you can take a zone twice, when you can take a zone once. But your first association of trading or looking at a price chart is just to take any price chart, no matter what time frame, and start looking and say, wow, if I wanted to go long here, I would have to look over to the left-hand side of the chart to get those details. How about this one right here? I mean, that was a great place to sell short. And as I look over to the left, I can see that I have that leg base, leg base group of candles. Okay. And we can see where price has changed direction. Okay. Now, there are some still some more rules and guidelines. I just want to give you that when the banks and institutions are involved, it's a very specific place on the price chart. Okay. It's where they have leftover unfilled orders. This could be a 50 minute chart. It could be a weekly or monthly chart where you walk through the same process, especially for traders that, um, you know, are, are long-term traders, don't want to be bothered with the short-term trading. Got it. Okay. But we have to start you off training the eyes to see that this is not a random act. It, it When the banks and institutions are involved, it's very easy to see their footprint when you know what you're looking for. So this is why we, I typically will ask for you know, what do you guys want to look at? A random chart, a random time frame? Because I'm so confident that when we start using 
a place we desire to make a trade, all I have to do is go over to the left-hand side and say, wow, if I desire to take a trade short here, I just have to find that group of candles, leg, base, 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 leg out and base. I just need to isolate yes. that range and wow. keep making the association and the picture together. See, here was that support area. Once it got broke, the area up above is where all the sellers were pushing price down, okay? So in that sell territory is where I wanna look for, sorry, uh, my zone. I wanna see that there's a very consistent group of candles, okay? See, this was my desired trade. I wanted to take this whole move down, okay? So we found a support area. We found our sell territory and we found a group of candles inside that area and therefore got our desired result. Very consistent. It's a forward looking technique. It's a forward looking and where we anticipate price to change direction, okay? okay. So, so this this ultimately is where where we want to be if we're trading. I would, you know, moving forward in my life, I would not be comfortable mentoring the students that I mentor to get them started. I wouldn't be comfortable in with, with, in, with trading in general if if I was not, you know, part of part of all of this. So I feel like this journey getting to this this place where we have this community is amazing and really you know we have people starting from scratch and we meet you where you are so i'll just um i'll just share the rest and then i'll take us off record because i want you guys to feel comfortable if you have any questions to ask so i'm going to be sharing let me just got to go back to me yeah we just had one trade set up on and play out right here on the in queue. Sorry to interrupt you there, Don. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this part of the way I teach is that um, I gotta find my tool right here. Huh? Is using real you market. Share history. your screen. You want to share your screen? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I just okay. couldn't find it. So the same concept that I was teaching you. Um, just a moment ago, was on a large time frame trade. Okay, so here we have our place with support. We had price bouncing around in there. We had our sell territory. We made a lower high. We found a leg base, leg base group of candles, and notice how price came right back up into that and changed direction. Okay, so it's this picture over here on the left hand side of the chart. Wow. That tells yeah, us you mentioned that before. I wish I set up my limit order while you while you were chatting there. <laughs> I would have had <laughs> this. <laughs> and this particular product pays twenty dollars per point for a mini contract, and for a micro pays two dollars per point. Okay. Now, if you're trading the mini, it just depends on your account size and what you're comfortable okay. trading. We went from five twenty eight down to about five hundred. Okay, so 28 points times $20 20. per point. So over $5,000. Not a bad way to go. And that's just and, using one contract. And that's just using one contract. And you would, on the NQ with the broker that, you know, I use you the intraday margin, you need $1,000 in your account. That's not what you're risking. What you're risking is where you're putting your stop loss, right? So Jeff showed you how we're determining where the stop losses go. Um, and as I shared, you, you've got to crawl before you walk, walk before you run. So we meet you all where you're at. And um, I'll share my screen again. Where is my Canva? Okay, you see my Canva, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go down to here. Um, and make this big. So really the next step after this, um, and you'll all get an email because I, because I have your email, I will send you a link um, and you are welcome to join us tomorrow and Friday. 
And even if you're absorbing and you feel like you're listening to someone speaking another language, it, it all will take you to where you ultimately, you know, want to go. But at a minimum, we want you to experience what we do on a daily basis. Uh, also, if you are at a point right now where you're saying, I can't live another day without understanding how to do this. I mean, that's how I felt. I felt like I wanted to get rid of that fear of money that I'm going to lose it all. Oh my gosh. My net worth is, you know, related to what my broker does on my behalf. And I don't understand the decisions they're making. Ken, is Ken still on? Ken, would you want to like say a few words around how like understanding the markets helped you with your, your just, you know, those limiting beliefs or, or the fear around money? Well, the, um, are you there, Ken? Hmm. In Germany, is my friend in Germany there? We talk about this all the time. Um, he may be in a place where he can't speak. I mean, listen, I'm I, a lot of, we have people of all ages, but I feel like it tends to be people like in their 50s, 60s, and 70s that join us because we're at a point where, you know, we've amassed wealth or we're thinking about what we want to do as we, you know, go, go into retirement, retirement being, I'm not showing up to do something that I really don't enjoy doing on somebody else's schedule moving forward, right? So it's about, wow, if I could have that confidence that I can be in this market and profit, whether it's going up or down, and sometimes profit even more when it goes down, because the bull goes up the staircase, the bear falls out the window, right? So the markets go down faster, uh, then, then this is a skill I want to learn. So I could really enjoy the rest of my life. I can't imagine not understanding this at this point in my life. Did you want to say something, Jeff? Yeah, the 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 trading room uh, is one of our community rooms that I, I go into every Thursday and Friday with with our traders. Uh, as Don and I were talking, it's, you know, it's important to Don and, and myself as well as educators and coaches that you as students find the right coach and you find the right educator. You You make the match that yeah, I understand what this guy's talking about. I understand, you know, the flow. I like the tempo. I like the confidence. I want to see it work, okay, before I put any of my capital into it. So the links that uh, Don has there, and I think she'll email you later with uh, those. Yeah, links. I'll email those to you. So uh, you're welcome to come in and watch what we do. Um, you can participate, ask questions. It's 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 a little more of an open forum on Thursday and Friday because it's where are um, more, well, it's where our, our traders that have been through our courses and things like that, we kind of go there to trade. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a more structured learning live trading room. We are a little bit slower. Uh, those are people that just completed the course material and started putting things together. It's really important that you get confirmation of that you're doing it right. Because if you just left to go home and do it by yourself after you've gone to a course for a day, couple of days, you know, you're trying to remember everything you're supposed to, okay? We want to make sure you support it. Um, also, from my point of view, I want to make sure that you get matched up with the right coach, the right mentor, okay? And there's only two of us, I mean, Caitlin and myself. Uh, Don is doing a form of coaching before bringing you into there, so you're prepared, uh, especially if you're brand right, new to like this. If you're brand new, like that's me, like I, I help you get your accounts set up and we, we do paper trading together. And it, so, so I, I do that. Um, you know, usually people stay with me for a month or two. I want to be like Mary Poppins where, you know, for futures trading, I want you prepare to be in the community and really absorb in the community and start making money in the communities. That's what I do. Uh, and, and yeah, but uh, we want to meet you where you're at. So we encourage you just after this call, um, join us and just hang out with us tomorrow on Friday. Um, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me and just understand, okay, let, I really want to understand where you're at, what's behind you wanting to do this. And uh, 
I will create with you a roadmap to get to where you want to go. If you want to work with, you know, I'm not selling you anything. If you want to work with me to get there, that's fine. Um, but all I can say is I wish I had somebody like me helping me when I was just starting out. And my dream came true that I had Jeff and Caitlin uh, where I'm at, you know, in, in my progression with all of this and in the community. So that's that's really all we have for you. Um, I want to stop the recording.